Oops, I'm going to empezar. Vamos a empezar. We record all of the lessons because sometimes life happens and sometimes you've got an appointment, you don't feel well, you got people working in your house, hammering, cutting, sawing, who the heck knows. And, you know, if, if for any reason you cannot be here on a class day, I always record it and then I send out the link after class so you can watch um you know, what we did during class, watch the activities and such. Um, muy bien. Uh, muy buenos días. Very good morning to everybody. Buenos días, buenos días. Me llamo, me llamo Marilyn. My uh, name is Marilyn. Me llamo Marilyn. Ooh, I heard a doggy. See, sí, un perrito. No. And I, you know, I tried with the, my AirPods and I wasn't getting any sound. So ah, there you go. Yeah, I prefer... <laughs> I prefer this. I, I know the feeling. I, yeah, sometimes, uh, you may want to look, I don't see because there are so many different systems and, you know, it, it's actually kind of worth it for just a minute. Uh, sometimes there's a little green shield. If you're on Windows, at least that appears in the upper left-hand corner. If you click on that, it gets you to like a settings box where you might be able to look at the, your audio choices on your device, you know, Mm -hmm. uh para que sepas just so that you know um okay uh otra vez estamos aquí me llamo marilyn oops we had a drop hopefully he'll get on back on uh y tenemos aquí sharon sí sharon y linda y pam do you prefer pam or pamela pam is good thank you pam okay fantastico kevin E, ooh, e, no hay nombre. Uh, Richard, I think, is joining in with us. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's probably, we need a couple of seconds for him to be able to get the gremlins in the internet to connect his sound in for us. Um, para que sepan, so that you know, um, it's good to turn on to look for the little chat button at the bottom of your Zoom screen and turn that on. A lot of people uh, perf like to send me a typed message. I mean, you can always ask me a question during class. I really like being interrupted, <laughs> so that's always okay. But sometimes people prefer to type one in. But just that's one of the tools that you can use your chat button, which will then appears a little separate screen. Um, uh, later on, probably not today, but our next class, I think for sure, there'll be a point where I will send people out into what we call breakout rooms. And breakout rooms mean sometimes I have an activity where I have you practicing with one or two people instead of the whole group so that you have plenty of time to practice with a partner, especially with pronunciation uh, early on in the lesson um, or early on in the course when we're learning <coughs> pronunciation. Uh, breakout rooms allow me to send you into your separate little room so that you'll only be with one or you know, two other people and that you get uh, uh, more interaction quickly. And, you know, you're off in the little room doing a job I've sent you to do, a practice I've sent you to do for maybe five minutes, seven minutes at most. Then we come back, we see what worked, what didn't work, what questions you have as you work through all the practice that we have. So uh, today, I don't think we'll do a breakout room session yet, but we will definitely do it next week for sure. Um, also, at the end of class, uh, I would say early afternoon, the day of class, uh, I always send an email out after a class and it lists any links to files that I have sent or that we use during class or files that you're going to do for like prep for homework for practice. Um, it will list all the links to videos that we either did use or that I want you to watch for the coming week. Uh, and it will give you the link to watch the whole class session on Zoom as it is recorded so that you know kind of what our um, routine is. Okay. 
la rutina, the routine. Um, para que sepan, aquí, aquí tengo el libro. Here I've got the book. Is, yeah. Um, I would like you to let me know if you did get the book. Yep. Or, yes. No, didn't. Okay. Linda, you're the only one today who did not. Okay. Uh, I am going to send you a vocabulary list so that if you haven't got the book, no biggie. Well, I'm curious, how did people get the book without paying for the CDs and everything else? Ah, I looked everywhere. Okay. Uh, this is a recent problem so that you know. Uh, and as recently as about two weeks ago, I was able to find some used copies. I mean, I just like plugged, I plugged in living language Spanish essential just into Google. And it, it spit out a bunch of used options. However, however, there is a problem with the, um, yeah, uh, it is on Amazon. Uh, generally it's sold with the CDs. Most people can't use CDs. I've got the audio for these anyway. So I'll send, Linda, I will send you a vocab list, which is equivalent to what is in that first chapter. Okay, so you've got it. And the audio that goes with it so that you can listen to the pronunciation of the words. Okay. Bien? And I'll probably send that just to you so that everybody doesn't have to look at all the links because it's a long set of links. Yeah. It looks daunting, but you know, all the audio links. Well, actually I will need to send out the audio links to everybody. Yeah. Used to be, you could get those online. This only started to go wanky wanky on me. Like literally in the last month or so. And then I thought, Oh, there's hope I can, I can find the book, uh, but then like the week before class, it didn't look very plentiful. So I'm gonna, uh, in later sessions, I'll have to come up with an alternative. But the information in the book is stuff I can still send to you. And a lot of the videos that we do and the files I send you uh, will more than make up for whatever you're missing out of the book, okay? okay. Um, I do wanna, um, Future that you would think it'd be easy to find a beginner Spanish book for adults. I'm here to tell you, it is not an easy thing. I have been looking everywhere. There, the, I, I think this is in the process of going out of print. So anyway, we'll be able to use the information in it for now. We will manage to get through and you'll have plenty of tools to work with. Definitely plenty of tools. Um, I wanna show you, however, um, one other clue, uh, one other tool, uh, I'll show you a different one next week, but this is one this week. Some of you have probably heard of this. I'm going to put it on the share screen. Um, this is called Duolingo. You should see a little globe here. Uh, Duolingo is good for acquiring a lot of easy vocabulary, basic vocabulary quickly. It is good for being able to hear the words being pronounced so you know how to say them. Um, it is good for very basic vocabulary. It is not great. Oh, and you do have to choose the language. And by the way, you can't look at S for Spanish because that's not the way we say Spanish. Espanol. Espanol. Um, SP in Spanish is not a thing to start a word. It has to be ESP, ah, Espanol. So if you click on that, um, and I would suggest the web app instead of the, excuse me, the website over the app. Uh, I found the app to be kind of annoying, but okay, that's just me. There is an app. Uh, so that you know. So anyway, um, it it does, uh, it will take you through lots of nice mini bites of information. Uh, it is not good at explaining grammar. Duolingo is kind of lousy at explaining grammar if you're the type of person who likes that. But it is very good at allowing you to do very mini bite, like five minute lessons. If all you have time for is five minutes every day, go do that for five minutes a day. 
okay? And you'll start to build a lot of vocabulary. Uh, Babel, the question is, how is Babel? Uh, Babel isn't bad. Babel, I believe, does not have a freebie version, whereas Duolingo does have a freebie version. But Babel is okay, too. Um, definitely. Um, the software recognition, the voice recognition <clears throat> with Duolingo is getting better, not perfect. Sometimes you can say a word perfectly and it will count you as wrong. It will ding you. Really? Why? <laughs> Sometimes you can mispronounce something and it says you're good to go when you're really not. So I always take the voice recognition for it listening to you if you speak into Duolingo with a grain of salt. Uh, but uh, we'll take all those little uh, speed bumps as we go along. Okay. Uh, there is a second site I'm going to tell you about next week, but Duolingo is the one I want you to know about today. Okay, vamos a empezar, vamos a empezar, we're going to begin, vamos a empezar con greetings, how you say hey <laughs> to people. Uh, and fortunately or unfortunately, of course, there are lots of different ways to greet people. Uh, in, in English and in Spanish, right? So uh, we're going to get our feet wet today with a little bit of just some basic phrases that are good to know. We're also going to get our feet wet with explanations of how you say you. Well, shouldn't that be obvious, but it isn't necessarily. <laughs> and how you say you becomes important. Um and we're going to get our feet wet with a little bit with pronunciation because pronunciation is an important thing to get you uh, a, a great jump start on Spanish so that when you see a word spelled, you know exactly how to say it because it's a very phonetic language. But, pero, vamos a empezar, vamos a empezar aquí con, uh, ¿Cómo se dice en español? ¿Cómo se dice en español? How do I say? And the way I would like you guys to ask me when you want to know a word and you want to interrupt me, because that's okay to do that. Uh, the way you ask, how do you say, how do you say is, ¿Cómo se dice? ¿Cómo se dice? Ah, bueno, repitan por favor. ¿Cómo? <clears throat> Como te dice, dice, and as dice won't have a hard D, although you, if you say it with a hard D, people will understand you, but it's dice, not dice. Yeah, English has dice. Yeah, D I C E is dice, the thing you throw when you're, you know, uh, playing a, a board game. Okay, but dice in Spanish. We pronounce like almost every letter, almost all the time. You pronounce like 97% of every letter you see. Yeah. There are a couple of silent letters in Spanish, but very few. So how do you say is really expressed in Spanish with the idea of how does one say? Ah, como se dice. Okay. Por ejemplo, for example. Por ejemplo, ¿cómo se dice cell phone? ¿Cómo se dice? ¿Cómo se dice cell phone? Ah, and I would answer back to you. Se dice, one says, se dice celular. Celular. Sí, <laughs> se dice, one says, se dice celular. Sí, se dice celular. Oh, en Latinoamérica, ah, muy importante. En México se dice celular. En Latinoamérica se dice celular. En el Caribe, in the Caribbean. Okay, many people in the Caribbean speak Spanish. Se dice celular. Ah, en España no se dice celular. Ah, in Spanish, they don't say celular. In España, se dice móvil. Móvil. 
M-O-V-I-L, móvil. 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 Um, ¿Por qué se dice móvil? Why? Why do they say móvil? ¿Por qué? Why? ¿Por qué se dice móvil en España, pero celular en México, Perú, Colombia, Argentina, Chile, etcétera, Bolivia, Ecuador? Uh, mm, no sé. Ok, because there are 20 different. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, uh, yes, I kind of do know why. Because the Brits, the Brits say mobile. And the Spaniards follow the Brits for uh, certain words, just like the Brits follow British English for certain words. So just as people in Britain or Australia or New Zealand or, uh, well, limitedly in Canada, sometimes in Canada, may have different English words for the same thing. That happens in Spanish too. And it happens quite a lot. Uh, uh, it's one of the slightly frustrating things for some people who are students of Spanish. There will be great variation in certain words between Spain and Latin America, between Northern Mexico and Central Mexico and Southern Mexico. So even regionally within the same country, sometimes there will be different words used for different things. That will not be a huge problem for you, okay? But just so that you know, what one of your mini homeworks for next week is I want you to play Stump the Teacher. And you may very well stump me if you pick some item that I don't know word. I, Pick some item. <laughs> Please don't make it like uh, a hex nut. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm not good with the whole, you know, itty bitty tool thing. <laughs> Pick some common thing off your desk, out of your kitchen, something, and bring it to class. And I want you to ask me, ¿Cómo se dice? And use the English word. ¿Cómo se dice book? ¿Cómo se dice book en español? And I will answer you. Ah, se dice, se dice libro. Libro. Okay, bien. So your first mini assignment is grab an item that's handy around and yeah, ask me next week. ¿Cómo se dice? How do you say? ¿Cómo se dice? Okay. ¿Cómo se dice en español? And we're going to be looking now at greetings. Saludos y despedidos. Saludos means greetings. Despedidos means ways of saying goodbye, taking your leave, going away, greeting people and saying goodbye. Okay. Your first, first impressions always matter. Okay. Fácil. There are going to be certain things. Uh, that are easy to learn to say. And the first one is hi, which is very genetic. We're going to talk, though, a little bit about like uh, formal versus informal, because that becomes a, a thing later on in certain areas. Uh, but super overall, the way to say hi or hello is hola. Hola. Repitan, por favor. Hola. 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 No se pronuncia la H. You don't pronounce an H. H, uh, ooh, as in French, H is silent. It is a silent letter. It is, it is not, the only way you do pronounce an H is if it is the very specific combination of CH. CH does get a pronunciation, but it gets the same one that you're used to in English. Ch, 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 ch. So, not hard. But if you don't have a ch, 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 if you just have an H, mm, muda, muda, it is silent. So, hola, hola. Hola can be used with anybody at any time. It is neither formal nor informal. It is just general. Hola. Okay. Um, for now, our other greetings depend on what time of day it is. And the good morning or good day, good day until noon. Any of these hours, ooh, any of, I got to look at, ooh, yeah, I got to look any of these morning hours, yeah, from when you wake up, up until noon, classify in the, go in the category of Good day, good morning, buenos dias, bueno, and it's plural. You're actually wishing somebody good days, okay? Buenos 
días. Repitan, por favor. Buenos. 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 And of yeah. course, when you hear people running it together, it'll be buenos días. Buenos días. Buenos días. Buenos días. Buenos días. Después de, del, del mediodía, afternoon, afternoon, uh, to say good afternoon is related to buenos días, but instead of buenos with an o, oh, o, oh, o oh sound, we get buenas with an a, 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 a sound. Buenas, buenas tardes. Buenas Good afternoon. Tarde. Buenas tardes. Buenas, buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. From buenas noon tardes. till sunset. Notice I did not say, ooh, buenas tardes is not just noon until six uh <laughs> buenas tardes if there is still tardes. light buenas tardes buenas tardes, tardes. may still be going tardes. on now if it is still light in you know july at the height of summer buenas tardes no. may still no. be going on no. Yeah, then um, it, it, it is literally driven by the last light of day. Okay, so if you can see sunlight out, people will still be saying buenas tardes. Okay, uh, buenas tardes. And again, it is plural, buena. And we'll take a look a little later on on what happens with plurals, how we make things thorough, plural. Buenas tardes. Okay. Buenas uh, tardes. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Okay, bien, uh, vamos. Uh, for good evening and good night, they are not separate terms. They're all the same. So once the sun has set, okay, uh, then we use buenas noches. And again, it is a buenas with an a ah sound. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. noches. Buenas noches. Good evening or good night. Buenas noches. Okay. So literally you're saying good days, good afternoons, good nights, good evenings, all of them. <laughs> uh, bien. Um, you may wonder why is it buenos dias, buenos dias with an o, o, o sound, but buenas tardes and buenas noches. Why do we flip that to an A? And we do, and that is important. Because uh, the word good, bueno, or buenos in the plural form, uh, has to look at the noun it's talking about to get its correct form, okay? All nouns in Spanish, this will be one of the frustrating things early on, but you'll get used to it. All nouns, all people, places, things, not just people, not just animals, all things, all names for things fall into either the masculine gender or the feminine gender, okay? El libro is a masculine word. It does not mean this is a boy. It's just a masculine word. It's a gender category, okay? Uh, so, dias is a masculine noun, Tardes is a feminine noun. Noches is a feminine noun. All the words that describe that noun have to be in the same form that noun is in. It's kind of like putting Lego pieces together. They have to fit. They have to fall into place. So that's why we have buenos dias with a buenos, buenos, but buenas tardes. Buenas tardes. Buenas noches. Okay? Está bien? Okay. Uh, Vamos a ver, vamos a ver, vamos a ver. Uh, con el reloj, with my clock. If this is the time, folks, uh, what greeting would I have for people at this time? PM. Buenas tardes. Buenas tardes, buenas tardes, muy bien. Uh, fantástico. Uh, if this is the time, AM, AM. Buenos días. Buenos días. Buenos días. Okay. <coughs> es fantástico. Uh, if this is the time PM. Buenas noches. 
Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Buenas. Yeah, by nine o'clock, the sun is down. Buenas noches. See, buenas okay. noches. Buenas noches. Okay, está bien. You may, you may hear people shorten buenos dias to a singular idea, meaning we take off the S from dias <laughs> and we take off the OS from buenos. So you may hear people saying buen dia. Buen dia. So if you hear people respond to buenos dias with buen dia, they're not correcting you. It's just a different way, a slightly different way of saying good morning, right? Making it singular. Buen dia. Buen dia. And why do people do that? No sé. I don't know. Uh, maybe just to make it shorter, briefer, uh, kind of slangy like. Yeah. Buen dia. But that's okay. Is that only, ah. for, is that only for buenos dias? Perdón? Is that only for buenos dias, like it, not just tardes or noches? What what for buenos dias? It's um. No, oh, I mean when they shorten it to buen dia, do they only do that for buen dia? Oh yeah, just just buen dia. Yeah, you don't hear buena tarde. You don't hear buena noche. Buena pregunta. Good question. See, it's always buena tardes. Now, I, now I am going to tell you this: people when they respond back to you may shorten it to buenas. They may do that. Ooh, yeah. So, ah, buenas tardes. And they may look at you, buenas, buenas. Okay. And again, they're just shortening their communication. That happens. Okay. Uh, you know, we have variations in English all the time too with what we do. Uh, but see, sí, buen día is okay. Buena tarde, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, vale. Uh, we're going to now start to get into a little bit talking about other things related to greetings. And you're going to get um, kind of a longish video to watch about this for homework. We're not going to play it today during class. Um, you know, there are a ton of ways to greet people in English. Hi, good morning. Uh, oh, how are you? How are you doing? Uh, what's up? Sup? <laughs> if you're very young, yeah, sup. Yeah. Uh, how's it going? Yeah, all right. So there are going to be different ways to ask people how they are, which is a normal part of that greeting process. But we're gonna throw a little wrench in the monkey works here. Uh, there is something, no, uh, there are more formal ways of saying, how are you doing? And there are less formal ways, okay? Uh, there, the, and there are formal ways to say you and informal ways to say you. So we're gonna get into that in just a bit. Uh, the very generic, always accepted and appropriate in all situations way to say, how are you is formally with the formal you, como esta usted? And I will try to in a light blue highlight that. Como esta usted? How are you? Como, como esta usted? But it will start to run together. So let's take the words separately first. Como? Como? Como esta? Esta. Usted. 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 That part, that usted word, is sometimes abbreviated when you see it written. Most of the time I abbreviate it, but I spell it out so that you know it's got two syllables and it's got all those letters. Usted. Usted is often abbreviated to UD, period. It gets an abbreviation in writing frequently. I have written it out here so that you see what letters are in those sounds for that word, okay? Como esta usted? But usually people are going to run all those words together. So it's going to sound like this. Como esta usted? Como esta usted? Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, if you can't say it fast now, that's okay. But at our goal we want to get through, you know, after a week, practice these this week, is to run them together. Como esta usted? Como esta usted? 
how are you? Usted is the formal you. When do I use a formal you? I use a formal you when it's just Tom, Dick, or Harry off the street. I don't know somebody. Or with older people to show respect. Basically, anybody you don't call by their first name is usted. Okay. okay. Uh, in general, that's the rule of thumb that's safe to use. So people will often use usted with a boss. Children will use usted if they're talking to a uh, uh, teacher, their principal. Um, uh, it is the polite you. If you're walking into a store and you don't know anybody in there, it is the correct way to say you. Como esta usted? English does not use this anymore. You know, hundreds of years ago we, they did, but they don't anymore. Como esta usted? But informally, if it's somebody your age, and you know, sometimes even after only one brief meeting, people, um, because they feel very friendly, will start to use the informal you, which is called tu, T-U, tu. But you're going to notice this informal how are you is not como esta usted, it changes to como estas, como estas. And Está from como está usted is reused, but we tag an S on to the end. And anytime we tag on a little S to the end of a verb, because está means is or are, uh, we're making it an informal you kind of verb. So both of these questions mean how are you, but como está usted is what we use to show respect to people we're not, you know, in on we're not on friendly terms with, we don't know them well. And como estas, informally, como estas. Here's the dividing line. If you're 30 or younger, or even more strictly 20 or younger, 20 year olds or 20 year olds, even if they don't know each other, they use tu. Kids use tu with each other. They just do, okay? So the informal you is como estas. You in this room, because in our Zoom meeting, if you talk to somebody else on the Zoom screen, by now you've been talking for a few minutes, you will be flipping into two question form. Como estas? Como estas? Because we are not operating on a really formal level here, okay? So, como esta usted? Como estas? Okay? Uh, a little... A slightly less formal way of saying how are you is to say how are things going for you? And that's como le va for the formal, como le va. How for you is it going? That's what it means. Como le va. But if you want to talk to a kid or somebody you're on a first name basis with, it's como te va. Como te va. Como te va? Como le va? Okay. The le word in como le va is the formal you designation. The te word in the como te va is the informal designation. How's it going for you? The te is the for you that's informal. The le is the for you that's formal. And Below it, we've got here is a uh, much less formal greeting. I would not use it with a boss in a formal business setting, but it's usually okay to use this one with people in general. Que tal? Hmm. Que tal? Que tal? How are you again? How's it going? more informal okay a little more informal so maybe not in a formal business setting but otherwise it works okay que tal que tal que tal the bottom one is super slang if this were a group of all teenagers you'd be using this one a lot right away quickly 
because this is what very young people use with each other. It is super informal. It is not appropriate in a store setting unless you know the person behind the counter. Yeah. Que onda? Que onda? Que onda is super informal. How's it going? Literally, it means what wave? Like a wave on the ocean? Not this wave, but a wave on the ocean. Que onda? Why? I don't know. Why do we say what's up? <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Yeah, right? There are many mysteries to language. Why do they say that? Sometimes it's more important just know, well, it's just what they say. So um, I would say for you guys, the top three lines are the ones that are most important. Como esta usted? Como estas? Como le va? Como te va? Que tal? Que tal is not so informal that it's disrespectful. It's, it's good. Okay? Bien? Uh, and I will have a whole video, uh, a longish one for you to watch her homework, where they talk a lot about greetings um, and also some of the body language that goes with greetings. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, okay, let's talk about your audience when you're greeting people. Your audience means whoever it is you're talking to, uh, which you makes sense because in Spanish, there are this many yous. If you want to get really technical, there are this many yous. Oh my God. But this you we're not going to talk about for a long time. <laughs> and actually, ooh, to be honest, this other you, we're only going to talk about it in a limited sense. So for your purposes, if you're dealing with people anywhere on this side of the ocean, in, in, in other words, anybody who's not in Spain, <laughs> anybody in Latin America and Mexico, there are going to be three words for you that they use a lot. If you go to Spain, it morphs into there is yet another you that is often used. We're going to talk about what these are, which you make sense. Okay, and this is actually kind of an important thing. Uh, yeah, you can sound quite rude, <laughs> actually, if you use the wrong you or just gringo, like, yeah, don't know that much. But here's the easy part. If you would call a person by their first name, because you have met them before, okay, if the person is somebody you call by, by their first name, um, if it's a, 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 or if it's a kid, um, I'm going to take this out because I think I, I originally had this <laughs> with a teenage group. That's why. Uh, if you call a person by the first name, if you're talking to a kid, a child, a teenager, yeah? Uh, or you're talking to a friend, or you're talking to, in some places, a family member, and this will vary from region to region, but often a family member, it will be tu. Tu is the word for you, tu. And it, notice it's not, oh boy, I'm going I'm to hope my microphone can show this distinction. It's not tu, tu. You know what we do with a T in English? Tu, t, 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 t. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to take the foot off the, the gas pedal with that letter T. And it'll be tu, tu, tu. It's still a T sound, but it's not like, poof, an explosive T sound. It's tu. Tu is you. Uh, it is less formal. Here's where tu would sound rude. If I... Um, if I were meeting a little old lady who moved into the house next door to me and I've never met her before, she's an 80 year old lady, it would sound, it would be slightly rude for me to use tu with her right off the bat. She may invite me to do that after we talk for a little while and then it's cool. Okay. Uh, but, uh, you don't want to. Uh, uh, you don't want to use tu willy nilly with people you don't know, or people on the street. You're asking for directions, for example. Okay, so easy to know though, because if you call them by their first name, if they're a family member, if it's a little kid, use tu. Okay, if you uh, uh, use only that person's last name as 
you know, if you talk to them as Senor, Senor Gomez, Senor Gonzalez, uh, if you use their last name, or if you're speaking to an older person or to a boss, uh, to a kid to a teacher, <laughs> not you guys to the teacher, but a kid to a teacher, okay? Or if you're talking to workers in a store, anybody helping you in a store setting, usted is the go word, okay? That's the you word that you want, usted, usted. And remember that this usted, when it is abbreviated, will look like this, U-D period, but it's not ud, <laughs> right? The word is spelled out, U-S-T-E-D, usted, usted. So there's our second U. Oh, yay. So we know tu, informal, buddy, first name basis, usted, somebody you don't know, somebody you only call by their address by their last name. That's the polite one. Uh, but you might be plural. Okay. Uh, like you guys. Uh, if you are talking to more than one person, so when I'm talking to all of you, I have to use in Spanish the uh, the plural you, and the plural you is easy to understand. It is we take usted and we put an e s on the end, and we therefore make it plural. So if you're talking to more than one person, saying you, it is ustedes, ustedes. Okay, ustedes. I want everybody to try that word because it's a long word. Ustedes. Repita ustedes. por favor. Ustedes. 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 So let's quickly, quickly go back so you see how I use this. Instead of como está usted, when you guys come on the screen uh, next week, I will greet you with Como están ustedes? Yes. Como están? I'm going to change esta. Como están ustedes? Como están ustedes? I can't talk to a screen full of faces and say, como estas? How are you, one person? Because there's more than one you on the screen, yeah? So it's going to become, como están ustedes? Como están ustedes? So what you need to know for right now is that there is a plural like us saying you all or y'all, if you live in a certain part of the United States, yeah, y'all know what I mean. Yeah, that y'all. Uh, and that ustedes is the y'all of the Latino world, ustedes. Now, technically, technically, there is a less formal and informal, you guys, just so that you know what this word is, because you may from time to time hear it. Vosotros. Vosotros is you guys, like ustedes is you guys. It's a plural you, but it's it's the vosotros is the plural of tú. Mm -hmm. It's the informal you guys. Vosotros is used all over Spain all the time when you talk to a group. Okay. But people in Latin America do not use vosotros. They don't like it. They don't use it. You don't need it. <laughs> you do need it if you go to Spain. Okay. Because it will be used there. So, all right. So, uh, I will be uh, sending you this little screen. So, all these little screens you see today, you're going to, you, you don't have to copy notes from it. You'll, you'll, you can just download it into your computer when I send the, the link. Um, okay. You don't need to worry too much. You do need to know that it exists because you might hear somebody from Spain using it, but you'll be using ustedes. Okay. Uh, we want to go through some polite words as well. Uh, ooh, be polite. Cortés. Cortés means polite. Uh, educado means polite. Uh, es importante. It's important. Uh, here are some very helpful words to know for being polite, poli uh, polite responses. The way we say please is por favor. Por favor. Por favor. Repitan, por favor. Por favor. Por favor. Por favor is liberally sprinkled. Sometimes. Ooh. 
Bye. Sometimes you will hear people shorten por favor to this, porfa. <laughs> porfa, porfa is less formal, but you do hear people using it, okay? It's, it's a shortened up way of expressing the exact same idea of por favor. Por favor is used way more in Spanish, I think, than it is in English. <coughs> um, it is really important to sprinkle any request, any question you have, to anyone you don't know where you're asking for help with por favor, because por favor will open lots of doors for you. It signals you as being a polite person, okay? Uh, some Americans unfortunately carry with us the ugly American label of being uh, not showing sufficient levels of courtesy. So uh, don't be one of those people <laughs> or because we are frustrated or, you know, upset because we're lost or upset about some situation and asking for help. We forget, but it's important to always remember, por favor. Uh, the thank you word most people around here know because they hear a lot. Gracias. 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 Thank you. Okay. Muchas gracias is just thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Right. Uh, the you're welcome word. Actually, there's more than one way to say you're welcome, but uh, this is the most common one, de nada. The response to gracias, thank you, is you're welcome, de nada. De nada. De nada is literally of nothing, like us saying think nothing of it, right, as a response, which someone may give you in English, right? Uh, you may also hear people saying something like, por nada. Yeah. Uh, you may hear them saying, no hay de que. Uh, ooh, I, my Spanish keyboard didn't kick in. Let's plug that in. Um, those all mean you're welcome. But the, the, easiest, the easiest one for you to kind of memorize as a chunk of words is, De nada, de nada, de nada, por, or por nada, bien, okay. Uh, now, here is a golden, golden, golden word. Let's put a star by this golden word. It is so, so important. This is like right up there in importance with the please word. So we're going to star these two. We're going to star them, asterisk them. Um. Okay, when you want to get someone's attention, when you are, por ejemplo, for example, you walk into a store and you would like to get the attention of the clerk, <coughs> always begin with this word, disculpe, disculpe. This word you don't hear a lot emphasized in like chit chat, but it is important. Disculpe. Disculpe. Ever heard of somebody being culpable? Culpable is the same, well, Latin to English thing. Ooh, and that culp fits into this culp. Disculpe. Disculpe. Uh, culpable means you're guilty. Yeah. <laughs> Disculpe is excuse me. And this is the excuse me that you use to get someone's attention in a very polite way. Disculpe is again, the formal, oh, I'm talking to somebody as if I were using usted way to say, excuse me. So if I want their attention in a store, I start before I ask for anything with disculpe. If I am lost and I've got my tourist map and I need somebody to help me with directions. The very first thing I say is disculpe, excuse me. Yeah. Um, anytime you're asking for something, uh, uh, this is the polite way to start. And then the people know, oh, little red flag, someone's going to ask me something and they're being polite. Disculpe gets you a lot of good attention and creates goodwill. The informal form of it is disculpa instead of disculpe with an e, a smile, e at the end. It's disculpa with an a at the end. 
probably you want disculpe because probably if you're saying disculpe, you're in a store, you're on the street, you're probably talking to somebody you don't know very well. Okay. Uh, but we use this to get someone's attention and to say, excuse me. There are other ways to say, excuse me, in slightly different situations. Let's say you bump into somebody on the metro, on a uh, subway, on, uh, on a bus, on the street, uh, you know, you're packed into the uh, el, el metro in la Ciudad de Mexico. You're in Mexico City. You're in, in, in the subway and you are pressed together like sardines, God forbid, but that does happen. Uh, and, you know, you jostle into somebody. That kind of excuse me, not the excuse me of I want to get your attention because I want to ask you a question, but the pardon, the true pardon me, ooh, I didn't, oops, is perdón which sounds a lot like pardon, right? Perdón, pardon, pardon me, perdón, perdón. Okay, and an alternative to perdón, uh, especially if you're asking to be excused from a meeting, like you get up to leave a meeting is con permiso. Or for example, in that I'm packed into the uh, uh, subway and I this is my stop, I got five people I got to squeeze by to get out at my stop. I might say perdón or I might say con permiso, con permiso. Con permiso literally means with permission. So that's the excuse me of, hey, coming through, pardon me, pardon my big body taking up room here, that kind of thing. Okay. So getting their attention to ask a question, disculpe, but you know, the excuse me like I bumped into you or I need to move past you or I need to walk in front of you is con permiso or perdón. Okay, está bien? Okay, ways to say goodbye. There are lots of them, lots of them, lots of them. But here are some brief ones. Adios, adios, everybody knows. Adios uh, is goodbye, of course. Adios, adios. Uh, another one. A little less formal, but people use this one all the time, informal and in informal settings. Nos vemos. Nos vemos is like saying see you later, right? Nos vemos is less final than adios, okay? Uh, nos vemos is when uh, often you know you're going to see the person again, yeah? Uh, nos vemos literally means we'll see each other. Nos vemos. All right. Another way of saying see you later is hasta luego, which literally means until later, hasta luego, or hasta mañana, until tomorrow. Yeah, if you're gonna if you're gonna see that person tomorrow. Uh, so those are all ways of saying taking your leave, saying goodbye. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Vale. Uh, I will be sending this video to you to watch with my and Jaime Jim. It is kind of longish, but it, it talks a lot about um, various greetings, puts them in context. Okay. They do a little role playing. So I do want you to go ahead and watch that. Uh, during the next week, I will send you the link to this, but this is what they look like. Um, uh, I want you to notice there is a thing that will happen, uh, the kissy kissy thing. And uh, that kind of got cut short with COVID a bit. Uh, oops, pardon. it got cut short a little bit with uh, COVID, but I think it is coming back because people just can't give that up. Um there is a lot more physical contact in Latin culture and um, not meeting somebody for the, well, sometimes meeting somebody for the first time. Yeah, sometimes uh, that kissy kissy, like, like air kiss, really. You're not like planning a big wet sloppy one. Women greeting other women or women greeting men. It is common to do the air kiss like yeah just 
pass on each side. They will show you how that happens with two people. Uh, it is not a big sloppy wet kiss. It is just, yeah. And you're really kissing into the air. Uh, but that is what people do with men. It's the handshake. Men, man to man, it's the handshake. See? Uh, and they'll talk to you a little bit about that. When you watch the video uh, with my and Jim about greetings and goodbyes in Spanish, there will be a few segments of the video where they're going to have some very long introductions, introducing themselves. And, and that stuff... Um, uh, gets a little bit long, you can kind of fast forward through some of those. Okay. Um, but, okay. Bien. Vamos. Um, we're going to go into the next item here. Okay. Alguna pregunta. Any kind of question? Any kind of question what we did in greetings so far? Si o no? No? no, no. Okay, we're going to talk about how to talk about yourself, how to introduce yourself. Yeah. And then you're all going to introduce. Yeah, you'll introduce each other. Yeah. The way we introduce people. Okay. The way we ask for people's names. What's his name? What's her name? What's uh, what's your name? Okay. Uh, wow. Look at all these questions. Uh, here's the way you ask, what is your name? And since it's got usted, this is, which kind of you? Mm. It's the formal you. So this is when, um, uh, you're not talking to a little kid. Yeah. Uh, you're talking to another adult that you truly don't know. Como se llama usted? Just like como está usted, how are you, is how are you. You're asking kind of generally after their health, how are they doing. This it would ask for an introduction, right? Como se llama usted. So let's isolate these. Como se. Como se. Right? Bueno, repitan. Como se. Como se. Como se. Now, the se is, is going to roll into this word. When you see this written out, it looks like llama, the animal. Uh, and it could be that, but this is pronounced llama, llama. And this elie can be pronounced, boy, this elie, this double L. By the way, that's considered a single letter. In Spanish, it's an oddball thing about their alphabet. The double L. Uh, Depending on the region, the country you're in, it might alter a little bit, but people will always understand you no matter which variation you use. That double L can be pronounced like a Y, like an English Y, or as I do, it's got a very slight, teeny, tiny Y before the Y. Como se llama, como se llama, but any variation in there in between the y and the j is okay. Okay. Como se llama usted? Como se llama, llama usted? What's your name? The extreme of como se llama is the Argentine Buenos Aires pronunciation, which is not yama or yama, but jama, jama, like Dr. Zhivago. Como se llama? Jama. That is only used in Buenos Aires, okay? Not in other parts of the, the Spanish-speaking word world. So while people understand it, it sounds like to other Spanish speakers, como se llama sounds pretty exotic and it automatically tags you as, ooh, are you from Buenos Aires? So you probably, unless you're going to travel to Buenos Aires, in which case, <laughs> of course, it's great to use it. You probably want to keep it in that Y to the slightly J with Y sound. Como se llama usted? Como se llama usted? Okay. Today, we're going to use como se llama usted because we don't know each other super well yet. But 
from here on out, because we have met for one session, it would go into the informal. Como te llamas? Como te llamas? Como te llamas? Bien? Okay. So there's the question. We'll look at the upper questions later. These are the two questions we're looking at right now. What is your name? Como se llama usted? Como te llamas? Okay. The way you answer that might be one of three things. Either me llamo with your name, me llamo Marilyn. Or I could choose, uh, literally, me llamo is I call myself. Okay, literally. Do we ever in English say I call myself? No, you don't. No one does that. But it is commonly used in Spanish. Me llamo Marilyn. I could, just because I feel like it, use a slightly different combination of words to say the same idea. Mi nombre es. Mi nombre es is literally my name is, word for word. Mi nombre es Marilyn. I can introduce myself that way. Or I can identify myself by saying, soy. Whoop, perdón. Or I can use soy. I didn't want to let me get in there. Okay. A ver. Got to undo that. Okay. Soy. Soy means I am. So I can respond. Me llamo Marilyn. Mi nombre es Marilyn. Soy Marilyn. That's we, how we identify ourselves. Okay. Bien. Vale. Okay. What I would uh, like you to practice a little bit right now is this phrase here of como se llama usted. Sharon, I want you to pick somebody on the screen and ask them what their name is. Pamela, uh, como se llama usted? Uh, usted Pamela. Okay, see. Sí. ¿Cómo okay. se llama usted? Uh, mi nombre es Pam. Bien, Pam. Pick somebody else on the screen. Uh, I don't see the names. <laughs> oh, perdón. <laughs> perdón, let me take this off. I hope I made that easier. Okay. Bien, bien. Uh, I know it's a little artificial, but I'd like you to ask Kevin. Okay. Uh, Como se llama uh -oh. usted? Como se llama usted, Kevin? Okay, okay. And, and you won't use the Kevin. Yeah, that's okay. Como, como, como está usted? Okay, Kevin. Me llamo Kevin. Bien, perfecto, <laughs> Kevin. Perfecto, okay. Kevin, I would like you to ask uh, Linda, see? And we won't put Linda in the question, of course, because... Uh, como se llama usted? Soy Linda. Soy Linda is okay. If she chooses to say soy, that's fine. Okay, Linda, I would like you to ask uh, Richard. I'm sorry, but the screen is gone with the words on it, and I don't oh, have the book. Okay, okay, perdón, momento, momento. I'll get it back for you here. Aquí, okay, bien. And I will highlight the one that you need. ¿Cómo se llama usted? My number is Richard. Exacto. Okay. Gracias. Muy bien. Fantástico. Uh, vamos a ver. Entonces, so you get a little, little sample of that, and I'm going to come back around and say, Sharon, ah, Sharon, I'm talking to you. Uh, ¿Cómo se llama usted? Soy Sharon. Bien, perfecto. Okay. So all of those things are... Uh, uh, ways to introduce yourself, okay? Uh, me llamo, mi nombre es, soy, all of those things. Okay. Uh, vale, bien. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit. We're going to riff more on that next week. Uh, but we'll leave that for now. 
Bien. A ver. Um, ok. Perfecto. Um, another video I am going to give you this week is going to be a video on pronunciation because we're going to do some of this right now. Pronunciation is a big deal because Spanish is a very phonetic language. And what that means is, unlike English, which is all kinds of screwy, silent letters and odd combinations like tough is T-O-U-G-H, but we pronounce it tough like T-U-F-F. -F. Yeah. Um, Spanish does not do that kind of shenanigan stuff. Uh, for the vast majority of letters, uh, if you can see it and spell it, you can say it. It's pronounced like it looks with really only two exceptions. Uh, every single letter is pronounced. There are only a couple of exceptions. Uh, every letter is pronounced. But the most crucial thing for you to learn today uh, is learning how to pronounce the vowels. The vowels are the key. Uh, it is really important. If you see words spelled out, Uh, on a, a Zoom screen or on a YouTube screen, okay, or on any files that I send you, um, you can pronounce the word even if you don't know what it means. <laughs> uh, the vowels are the most important part of the whole alphabet for Spanish uh, because if you get the vowels wrong, it's easy to be saying the wrong word. I don't know how to express that. Yeah, that's just the way it is. Okay. If you swap out, like if your English brain <laughs> wants to anglicize a, anglicize a word, okay, because you think, oh, it sounds like this English word and you pronounce, the, pronounce it the English way, you may actually be pronouncing it wrong. You want to get the vowel sound exactly, exactly right, but that's easy to do. In, uh, in Spanish, every single vowel has this many sounds. Each vowel makes only one sound. That's it. That's all she wrote. There is no other way to pronounce that letter. Okay. So unlike English, which has, I think, technically 19 ways to say the letter A. Yeah. A, 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 that schwa thing. Schwa. Schwa. <laughs> What is a schwa sound in English? It's the uh sound, uh, right? Uh, uh in Spanish is your enemy. <laughs> the uh sound in English is so pervasive, is used so much, be it co a correct pronunciation or uh, a way of shortening our speech that's maybe not technically correct, but everybody does it, like gonna, I'm gonna go, yeah. Is that great English? I'm gonna go. No, but do you hear people say it? Well, sure. Yes, you do. All right. So you need to know that gonna means going to. Yeah. But that uh sound, it boom, boom, boom. You want to do it because right now our English brains, unless, uh, oh, unless you have studied another language like Italian or French or maybe German, our English brains are so ingrained Your brain is literally wired to want so desperately. The English is just going to come out. So it's a bit of work to fight that and to literally do the correct pronunciation of that letter or sound or vowel in Spanish. So you're going to get this list of uh, 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 practice words through the email, but we're going to take a quick look at just the vowels today. And I'm going to send you another, yet another video on how to pronounce the vowels because it, it helps from you to hear it from me. And then it helps for you to hear it from somebody else with different examples. It helps to get as many examples and to listen as much as you possibly can. It is more important for you in these first two lessons to listen a lot and get used to identify the sound than it is to produce it perfectly. Although we are going to start, pr try to produce, produce, <clears throat> excuse me, perdón, 
some of these perfectly. Um, you're going to get a long, long list. This is like all the, oh, you're only going to look at the vowels. Vowels are A-E-I-O-U. Yeah. A-E-I-O-U. And we're going to take a look at just uh, the vowels so that when you see things spelled like, like buenos dias, you know how to pronounce it because you are going to pronounce every single letter that you see. Okay. Um, bien. Okay, and these are some of the things that eventually we'll be looking at these words and you'll be going into Zoom rooms to practice these with people one-on-one -on -one so that you get a lot of intensive practice. But we're going to do the vowels here together today before we hit the 11 o'clock uh, time limit so that you absolutely hear the correct way of saying them. Uh, la letra A and the letter in the alphabet, it, in English we call it A, in Spanish we call this A. It's the name of the letter ah 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 is both a letter ooh also if it's used by itself it's a word ah by itself with nothing else around it means the word to t o mine as in ah uh, ah uh, voy a hablar voy a hablar I'm going to speak okay voy a la tienda I'm going to the store. Voy a la tienda. I'm going to the store. Voy al super. I'm going to the supermarket. Super is a shortened for supermarket. Okay. This letter A in Spanish is called A. And the sound that it makes is the same as the name of the letter A. It will not have 19 different sounds. It only can sound like this. A. That's it. And it is always pronounced. It is never silent. A. Ah, so we're going to pronounce, we're going to practice. <laughs> yeah, we're going to practice using some of these words. I give you the English for what that word means, although it's not a big deal, but uh, uh, just so you get used to, we're, but the, our, our point is to pick a short word that's not a great big long sentence where you can isolate this sound and produce this sound accurately. Okay. So we're going to try these together. Uh, the word for bed, kama. 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 All right. Kama. And it's pronounced, it's important not to say kama because they won't really know what you mean if you say that. Or kama or kama. Kama. It's kama. Every letter gets pronounced. Kama. 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 Okay. Yep. We're going to isolate another uh, word with an ah uh, ah uh, sound. Okay. The word for a play, like a play on a stage. Okay, like a Shakespeare play. Drama. 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 Okay. Uh, don't worry about the roll the R thing yet. We won't do that yet. There is a thing about rolling an R, but it's not a big deal yet today. Drama. Drama. Now we have a word for plant. Oh, you'll notice sometimes words are cognates. That means they sound like an English word and they mean what you think, but we're going to pronounce them the Spanish way not the English way. So instead of plant, we say planta. 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 Our objective with this is just to get that ah sound wired into our brain. Planta. 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 Never planta. 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 Ah. Ah, ah, ah is like way back here. Ah, ah. ah. Like when ah. you go to the doctor, ah, that same ah. ah. Okay. Uh, the way you say, hey, Open this thing, open it up, is abra. 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 Abra la puerta, open the door. Abra la ventana, open the window. Abra. Abra. Ooh, open please. Abra, por favor. Abra, por favor. Bien. Okay, abra. Another isolated a uh, a uh, sound. Mapa. 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 Mapa does mean Mapa. map. It's, but it's pronounced not mapa, but mapa, mapa, mapa. Ah, 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 ah. And notice with our ah sounds, literally we do drop our our jaw. Ah, 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 ah. Yeah, you open your mouth quite, kind of a lot for that ah sound. Uh, uh, some people advocate that you practice words like this in front of a mirror and look at your your mouth. L literally how you move those mouth muscles and tongue muscles will matter. Okay. Mapa. Oh, here is one word for eyeglasses. There are, 
depending on where you live in the Spanish speaking world, some people use a different word, but here's one word for glasses, gafas, 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 gafas de sol would be sunglasses, gafas, gafas, gafas. Okay, here's a word for skinny. And it means like skinny, skinny, placa. 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 Okay. Bien. Here's a word, one of the words for potato, because, oh, this is the Spain word for potato. Patata. 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 If you're Patata. in Mexico, this will be more like this. Papa. <laughs> same thing. Same word. It's just shorter. Uh, papa. Okay, papa or patata. I think I put patata in because it makes you say more as. Patata, patata, patata. Uh -huh. Patata. Oh, we hear this in some uh, names of cities in the United States and the West part of our country. Santa, like Santa, Bar Santa Barbara, Santa Clara. Yeah, but it's Santa. 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 Santa means saint Santa. or holy. It's, ooh, it's an, Ah, it's a feminine, uh, feminine word. Santa, Santa. It's a feminine word. Okay. Uh, here is the word for white. One of the words for white. Blanca. 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 Ah, ah, Blanca. Ah, ah. Blanca. Bien. Here is another one with an ah, ah, san. Calma. 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 And you'll notice the L gets a little more of a lilt. Calma. 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 Yeah, see, sí, bien. Casa. 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 Bien. You'll notice, yeah. wow, not a whole lot of difference with those consonants yet, is there? They're kind of what you expect them to be so far, so far. Okay. Uh, here is another word, banda. 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 Band, like a band banda. that plays music. Okay, <clears throat> great. Let's seg over into this letter of the alphabet. This letter in English, we call it E, but in Spanish, it is not called E. In Spanish, this letter is called E. Yeah. E. Yeah. Mm, kind of yeah. think of Happy Days TV show, Fonzie. Yeah. Hey, but cut it short. Cut it real short. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. And that's the sound it makes 100% of the time. There is no such thing as a silent E in Spanish. So English words like flame, yeah, F-L-A-M-E, we have to pronounce every letter. There is no silent E. So every time you see an E, it has to be pronounced. Here's the word for hair, pelo. 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 Here's the word for a cable, like to plug something in, but we won't pronounce it like cable. It'll be cable. 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 Here's a word that means center, or this also means like a downtown area. Okay, like the center of town. Centro. 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 But always eh, eh. Centro. Centro. This word has two meanings, depending on the context. It can mean the direction, east. It can also mean this, like this phone, this book. Este. 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 And notice, oh, this is very close to the word you used in the greeting section. Como esta? But it's not esta. It's este. 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 este this thing. Okay, here's the word for brief and it's got two e's. Breve. 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 Bien. Breve. Here's the word for the color green. And the v will sound like a b, folks. The v is going to sound like a soft b. Verde. Uh, verde. 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 That place not too far from where I live, Rio Verde. Or like they call, like to call it Rio Verde. <laughs> yeah. 
a Rio Verde. Verde is Verde. green. Oh, we have uh, biblically and verdant pastures that are uh, verdant. Verdant is something that's green. Yeah. Uh, a lot of our highfalutin words in English are high level words. Uh, Hoity toity words come from Latin. Okay. And they will share some, uh, uh, you know, so say, oh, yeah, I know the word verdant. I don't say, I don't use verdant very much, but I know what it means. Okay. Uh, verde. Here's the word we change some of the consonants and it becomes cells. Somebody sells something. Vende. 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 Like, ooh, like a vending machine. Yeah. Vende. Vende. But the V will sound like a soft B. It will. The B, the V, V sounds like a soft B. Uh, bende, bende. Here are two E's together. And that means we're going to just drag the E sound out longer. So instead of ler, it'll be ler. 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 ler means to read. It in indicates an action. Doesn't tell you who's doing it, just that it's that activity of reading. Ler. Here's another, another double E, because sometimes you do see double E's and we just drag it out. Creer. 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 Uh, yeah. Oh, you know, uh, uh, credo is uh, what somebody believes. Yeah, a statement of beliefs. Uh, you give credence to that belief. You give, uh, oh, yeah, I trust that. Okay. Uh, creer means to believe as in the idea of I think or I have an opinion. Yeah, or just straight out, I believe. Here's a word for uh, material that is used in building houses and pipes and stuff. Cobre. 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 No silent Cobre. E. We have to pronounce that E. Yeah, Cobre. 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 Okay. Cobre. Here's the word for jungle. Selva. 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 Selva, right? And here's yeah. another one where the B is going to sound like a B because they always do. Benta. 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 Benta is a sale, like on an item. An item is on sale. Benta. See? Benta. And here's another double E that is used a lot. The word for TV, the short word for TV. Tele. 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 Okay. Tele. Uh, bien, bien, bien. Here we go. Here's the next one. This letter is I in English and Spanish. It is called E. 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 This is e. e. This, guys, is not E. <laughs> this is E. E. And that is the sound it makes. E. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but it is short. It's not E. It's E. 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 Short. Okay like the long E we have in free, but shorter. We cut it short. We cut our vowels short. We don't drag them out unless it's, unless it's leer with two E's together, creer with two E's together, okay? <clears throat> Otherwise we keep it short. So we're gonna pronounce that E, E, E sound here. Libre. 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 Okay, Libre. the word for free. Somebody is free. Not an item is uh, uh, free, but uh, a person is free. Libre, okay? Uh, gris. 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 It's that color. Gris. 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 The word for yes. Si. 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 Okay. The word for my. Me. 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 Mi casa su casa. Yeah, you've probably heard that. Mi casa su casa. My house is your house. Yeah. Okay. The word for paints. Pinta. 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 Pinta, the word for private, privado. 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 Oh, privado. you are recycling your ah sound again. Privado. privado. Here's the word. Here is the word for the uh, month of the year. Abril. 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 Here's a word, word that is a very nice compliment word. It means somebody is nice, meaning, wow, are you nice. Uh, simpatico. 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 
Simpatico. Simpatico means nice, as in a human being behaves in a very agreeable and kind and sweet way. Simpatico. Here's something people often say when they toast glasses and they boom, 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 you know, you touch your glass with somebody else's, you have a little drinky poo. Okay, chin chin. Chin chin. Chin chin. I don't know if they stole that from Italian or not, but anyway, chin chin, you hear that. Okay, here's a shortened word for a uh, measurement of uh, uh, a kilogram. Kilo. 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 Okay. Kilo. okay. Here's a word for the flu. <laughs> the whoa, the I'm sick in bed with the flu kind of flu. Gripe. 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 Yeah, Gripe. there's gripe. Gripe. Bien. Okay. Here's a word that has a couple of meanings. It can either mean I'm ready or it can mean, ooh, what a clever, smart person that is. Listo. 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 Listo is not a list, <laughs> kind of a false cognate in this sense. Uh, listo uh, means somebody is ready or that they are very smart. Listo. Listo. Okay. And here's where we see a lot of street signs where we live. And it is not vista, it's vista. 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 E. vista. E. E. Okay. All right. So we had. Ah, very open. Ah, you need to drop your jaw. Ah, ah. ah. E, e. We tighten it up a little bit. Our mouth. E, right? It comes up like in this part of your palate. E. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. E here that we just practiced. And this letter A. E. 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 And think of e. e as smiling. E. 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 Ah. E. 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 Okay. We're going to cover the last two real quickly here. Oh, and we're only going to give you a few of those because this one's really easy. Oh, is long O always. It's never like pot, not cot. Never. It's always oh, oh, oh. Now, oh. here's the one thing. It's important to keep this oh short because English O drags out O. Oh. You want it to be oh, oh, oh. Oh. And your mouth should literally be round when you say this sound. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so we get words like, we're just going to do a few of these. Gorro. Don't worry about that. Gorro. Gorro. A cap that you wear in the winter. Yeah. Fondo. 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 Yeah. Oh, very English. Oh, it looks like fond, but resist that English. Your brain is so wired into English. Fondo. 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 There you go. Just the word no, 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 yeah. no, yeah. yeah. Uh, the word for balloon, globo. 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 globo, globo. The word for fat, gordo. 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 Okay. Uh, the word for two costs, costar. 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 Yeah. Costar. Here is a question word. It's a question word when you need to ask where. Donde? 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 Mm -hmm. Here's a word that means short in length, like a short skirt or short pants. Yeah. Uh, a short film. Corto. 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 Sounds kind of like Corto. cut, doesn't it? Yeah, it means that too. Corto. Corto. The word for gold. Oro. 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 Yeah? Oro. Our word for wolf. Lobo. 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 Okay. The word word for this direction, north, norte, 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 norte. A word for the sun, sol, 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 sol. Uh, this is not a complimentary word. Foolish. Oh, you dummy, tonto, <laughs> tonto, tonto, tonto. Yeah. Uh, Oh, don't we have that? Oh, the National Forest. Yeah. 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 I don't think that comes from the same thing. Tonto. Because that wouldn't make any sense. Okay. Ah, this is very important. This does not mean small in size, little in size. It means a little bit, a small amount. Poco. 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 Un poco. Un poco. A little bit. Un poco. Un poco. Bien.
Okay? And a word for soon, pronto. 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 And then, oh, pronto. we are pronto. We don't pronounce it that. It'll be pronto. 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 Oh, oh, oh. pronto. 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 Bien. Pronto. 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 Okay. Uh, quick introduction, then we're going to wrap up. This is our last one. The O is going to give us a little bit of trouble, but we'll come to the little bit of trouble uh, part later. Okay. Uh, most of the time. Sometimes you see you in combination with certain letters, and we'll talk about that, not today, but a different day. But uh, if you see the U by itself, it's in particular, it's U, and it's always U, U, U. And it's ooh. like U, U, and you really need to U, 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 right? Ooh, uh, small, ooh. like not O, but U, yeah? Even smaller with your lips, okay? So the U of moon. So we have words like this, azul. 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 Azul is blue. Burro. 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 We'll talk about that double R later. Yeah. Cumbre. 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 A peak of a mountain. Cumbre. Cumbre. Or if you want to say something covers something else. Cubre. Cumbre. 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 Okay. Or we've got a word for pen. Pluma. 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 Uh, we've got this word, which means like what you think it might mean. Pura. 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 Okay. Pura. Uh, the way we say, oh, pleased to meet you. Mucho gusto. Mucho gusto is the way gusto. we say pleased to meet you. But just the word by itself is gusto. Gusto. Gusto, gusto by itself means pleasure. Gusto. Gusto. Uh, uh, oh, let's take a quick, quick look here because I'm going to skip a couple of these. When we have two vowels next to each other, we must pronounce both of those vowels. So let's take a look at this one. This happens sometimes with this U in particular. We're going to pronounce both the A ah and the U. So it will become flauta. 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 Let's look at another U and other vowel combination. And these two are both going to be pronounced, but they're going to slide together. Cuesta. 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 Cu and E. Are going to slide together. Cuesta. 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 Bien. Okay. Uh, and we're going to end this up with, with this one here because we're kind of running short on time. Some of you may have places to be at 11 here. We're a little bit past. I will send you the link to this so that you can see it. Do pull it up. You may want to print it out. We're going to practice a lot of items on this sheet later on. Uh, I am going to give you a video to watch on introductions and polite things to say, uh, uh, a video on vowels, just the vowels, okay, so that you get used to those vowel pronunciations. So I do want you to watch all those videos, and I'll send you links to all the little items that we have. Uh, you're going to grab an item to ask me, como se dice, how do you call this? Yeah. <laughs> um, and we'll talk a little more next week about things like um, how we talk about uh, how we make things plural, just so they're pre preview. So in other words, if I want to say book, but I want to really say, oh, no, I want to buy these books. Yeah. How do we make book into more than one books? And mostly it'll be just putting an S, but sometimes it'll be putting an extra thing on. Uh, so just focus on that. Focus on a lot of the pronunciation stuff you get from the videos. And I believe uh, last week I had sent you the, the video on all of these uh, introductory phrases, right? And mm -hmm. kind of went over it, but I said, don't watch the whole video, watch just that segment. Mm -hmm. Rewatch that again, rewatch it again, because every time you hear somebody else, not me saying it, uh, right, you're getting different speakers, you get, uh, get more, the, the very most important thing is to listen a lot. 
listen a lot because that's how you pick up the natural sound that you can later learn to reproduce yourself. Okay, está bien. Sí. Marilyn, how are the CDs that come with that uh, book? I am going to send uh, all my copies because I very smartly, soy muy lista. Wow, I am smart. Two years ago, I downloaded the whole sucker. Well, I downloaded it from my CD, but uh, I downloaded that all off the website, which you can't get now, mysteriously. So I'll send that all along. Thank you. But you're going to see a whole list of them and you'll think, oh my God, look at all this audio. They're all like maximum 30 seconds, one minute long. That's all. Each, they're all very short okay. audio clips. Super short. Believe me. Okay. Bien. Thank you. Excelente. Fantástico. Entonces, nos vemos. You'll get, have some things to listen to and do listen a lot to all those videos because uh, it gives you that experience of getting those Spanish sounds in your head. Uh, y... Nos vemos, nos vemos, I'll see you later. Nos vemos. vemos. Nos vemos, sí. Adiós. Hasta luego, sí. Cuídense, take care, cuídense. Cuídense, muy bien. <laughs> Thank you.